Hello and welcome back to the channel. Hello. This week's collaboration video is about an interesting subject about the five best gadgets that we carry in the van when we're on our travels. Now we're in a collaboration group, the scrolling image that you can see on the screen now tells you about the other members of the group who are from different uh, types of vehicle backgrounds, different experiences and the idea here is we all contribute from a different aspect to this title. So we hope you'll watch all their channels as well and get a good overview across a broad spectrum of opinions about uh, which are the best ga gadgets. I know we certainly will. Yeah. So let's kick off with number one. Number one is the Apple AirTag. I hope you can see it there. We bought these in a pack and we've scattered them in vehicles. We've scattered, the in, scattered them in camera equipment and we've also put one on the dog. Now the dog, you can buy um, a holder that fits onto the collar and working on the theory that you don't work with children and animals, I'm not gonna pick her up and show you because it'll be like trying to wrestle an octopus. But uh, yeah, Poppy's got one on a collar and we can track it on our iPhones so we can see where everything is. Yeah, don't know whether there's an Android equivalent. Uh, it's obviously an Apple device, so it mm. works on the Apple devices, but it's quite interesting because within a couple of minutes of leaving either a vehicle or a camera bag or, or the dog behind, heaven <laughs> forbid, it's telling you on your phone saying you've left, you've left uh, something behind. behind. Yeah. yeah. So that's the first one, and it's worked for us a couple of times, where particularly where we've, as we get to a certain age where we can't find where we park the vehicle, <laughs> it's worked quite well, and it works all over Europe. So that's, that's the pretty, pretty much uh, our starter for five. Now the second one is our solar panel. Uh, now you might be uh, wondering why is a solar panel uh, interesting? Well, it's what's on the back of our solar panel. We've got a direct port that we can use uh, to plug in uh, both uh, our phones and our iPads. So our third gadget is this plug, which helps me check whether there's a reverse polarity issue on campsites in Europe. Reverse polarity, if you're not sure, and I'm not an electrician and I don't pretend to be, but it's where the neutral and the live currents are swapped over. And the practical effect of this is, in an English UK spec vehicle, it can mean that some of the housing around lights and fittings could be live. So in theory, you could get an electric shock. Mm. Now, some people argue that uh, this isn't the issue that uh, we worry about, but I've always taken the view safety is better than, uh, than being sorry. So I've always used this. And uh, this basically, if you can see up close, is a plug. It's a three pin plug. It goes into your plug socket and it tests the currency flow uh, in and out of your vehicle and tells you if you've got three red, three red lights, everything's fine. Mm. If you've got two, it tells you what's missing in the configuration. So it either tells you whether you've got no earth, where you've got live and neutral reversed. Uh, or whether you've got a fault full stop. Now what can sometimes happen with this, because in Europe you've got two pin adapters, it also tells you whether you've got this the wrong way around, because it isn't always that obvious. This is the two pin adapter that plugs into your electric socket. But if when you're using this, you've got an issue with polarity and need to reverse it, there's another adapter you can buy here, which you just plug into your mains lead and then plug this into the post or, or uh, electric hookup point, and it's designed to convert the polarity back so that your van is uh, talking properly to the post. Now our fourth gadget um, is this and it's a small battery charger. It's just enough to jump your battery if you get a problem. It's called a Knocko Boost Plus. There are other alternatives we're, and we're certainly not championing this brand over another but it's just to say that as a gadget we found that useful on a couple of occasions particularly when the vehicle's been in storage mm. and left. Um, and there's been no light through a solar panel because it's been winter. The battery chargers needed a bit of a bit of help to get started. Uh, and that's quite a nice compact piece of kit. I bought this from Amazon, uh, but like I said, there are other options and I'm certainly not championing that. And I bought that, we're not, uh, we're not product ambassadors for that. It's just simply the, the, the actual gadget itself that I found quite useful. Now our final piece of, uh, final piece of gadgetry um, is our mobile Wi-Fi system. Mm -hmm. We um, struggled for a while, we've tried all sorts really, from mini miniature dongles to standalone Wi-Fi uh, routers to uh, tethering with phones. And by and large, up and down the country, we've yeah. had one or two different problems. Mm. Some of that's down to the service provider that we've chosen. I accept that some parts of the country uh, are not so good with some providers as others. Um, but we've tried all hands really. We've tried carrying different types of SIM cards. Uh, unless you go to Europe where of course you get SIM card universal coverage <laughs> yeah. everywhere, 5G, <laughs> not yeah. a problem. <laughs> yeah. But in the UK in particular where we've had problems getting a signal, we've fitted this antenna 
antenna, should I say, to the roof. We've got a router that's plumbed inside the, uh, the cupboard itself and we've not had any problems getting a signal since there and really actually have, uh, have enjoyed that, uh, that experience. And here's a little bit of footage that shows you around the router and the installation on the roof. So located in a cupboard on the wall is our inbuilt router. It does slide out but it's in its own housing. And the SIM card goes in there and the power cables run at the back onto the roof to the antenna. And there, attached to our dirty roof, is our antenna. I cleaned this van last week, but we've had some more of that Saharan dust, it seems. So that was a very quick walk round the five gadgets that we wouldn't be without on our motorhome. Please watch the other channels and um, that's it from us. If you've got any questions, please just ask in the comments below and we'll get straight back to you. But having said all that, that's Helen out. Martin out.